This is Plane Maker Tutorial 32 and Blender Part 18. I'm going to cover two topics that have become pretty relevant. I've gotten a lot of emails about people asking me what's with the inability to export multiple textures. There's this error that pops up for them that says, sorry, you're using more than one texture. And the other thing I want to cover is how to append objects to existing files. So basically what I have here is the overhead panel of the ERJ's cockpit. And it's basically a series of breakers or um, fuses. And I'm going to show it in textured mode. Zoom in a little bit and you'll see here that every function in the plane has a, one of these breakers. But basically the rule of thumb is that you're only allowed to use one texture. Well, if you look at this object, it looks like I've used two textures. Not so. I've been using one texture. Just let me clarify that here. 2048 by 2048 sized PNG file that was taken from a poster that was photographed behind a glass pane. You can see the photographer's hand here as the glass pane reflects it. And I've been going through the process and revamping it in Photoshop to take on this appearance instead of this appearance. So what I will do in Photoshop tediously, mark all these panels out and all the screws out and create layers in Photoshop that have textured backgrounds. And I try to leave all the writing, all the original white writing intact. And I can do that with filters and with selections and all that stuff and the end result can look pretty photographic. Now this isn't even the final photographic look. I will add shading and stuff. I'm going to get to that in just a minute. I'm going to go to the actual cockpit file. This is only the overhead panel file. But before I continue on to that cockpit file, I just want to showcase that I can append or link any object from any other Blender file that you're currently working on. For example, the glass windshield here from this test file. Oh, look, I got the windshield there. The problem now is that this windshield carried a texture with it that we don't know if it's the same texture that's been applied to this guy here. I can pretty much guarantee it isn't the same texture. One way to find out is to have this texture window open. It's the UV image editor. And you see that when I select any of these objects that were in the original scene and tab into edit mode, this picture will remain in the background. Whereas if I click on this new object and tab into edit mode, suddenly the picture changes. Now I know that in fact there are two textures being used. Now good luck trying to export that. The export script will say no way. So let's try that. Let's go here and go. And it says the object format supports only one texture file, but you've used multiple texture files. See the console for a list of files. Now it's going to highlight the files that are using another texture. Now it could be either one or the other. Notice we imported this glass and it's using this texture. And since that was the last object we had highlighted, it said, okay, well all the other stuff doesn't match with this texture. So I'm gonna give you a list of all the items that are not using this texture. Okay, if I delete this now, then that texture remains somewhere in the purgatory of this file. I don't even know where it stays. And it adds to the confusion of what we're dealing with. So. This is a bit of a frustrating part of this whole process because I can't really explain how Blender does this and I can't go in and delete all the unnecessary texture files. All I have to know is that I have to make sure that the objects in this scene only refer to one texture. Now there's a list of textures that come up after I've imported other objects and this list gets longer and longer depending on how many textures I've been using in this scene all through this process. And sometimes you can do stuff, for instance, if I now undo the deletion of the windshield, I can force this texture to be replaced by the one we're using up here so that the textures all match. So I can go here and say, well, let's use that texture that I've been using all along in this scene. And let's see if it's going to like me now. Let's see if it's going to export. And I must have chosen the wrong texture. Okay, let me double check this. Normal map test.png. That's the texture I've got mapped around this object. Let's take a look at this. Oh, see, I, I mapped it wrong. Normal map test.png. It's the same underlying image, but you see what kind of confusion can arise sometimes. I'm leaving this in the video because I think it's important for you to realize that it's not always the way it seems, and it's sometimes really hard to wrap your head around what exactly is going on with these textures. So basically now I think I've matched the texture of the windshield with the texture of the overhead panel. So let's try if I can export this. And yes, now it works. Now these two textures coincide, and we're back to having only the usage of one of these textures in this scene. It's very important that you only use one texture per object that you want to export.
Okay, so I'm going to delete this windshield because I don't need it. I'm going to save it again, and now I'm going to take you to the cockpit file. Basically, I have this cockpit here. You already see that I've started experimenting with shading, and we'll get to that in a later tutorial. For now, I just want to point out that I've got the same scenario happening here. I've got a rough version of the skin here. You can still see the crests and the folds of the actual poster. I'm going to go through in Photoshop and make all that look really stunningly nice. But for now, I've modeled it pretty accurately. You can see here the uh, switch caps are all modeled precisely. Remember I told you that normally objects do not allow for multiple textures? Well, cockpit objects apparently are an exception. Let me demonstrate. If I try to export this now, I'm pretty certain that I have all these objects assigned to this one texture. How about if I try to import the overhead panel that I've just been working on? I'm going to append an object from the overhead panel. Uh, I'm middle mouse clicking on it. So then I go to object and I select all with the A command and I say load library. And what we'll see here now is we will see the overhead panel as it fits into the rest of the cockpit. And this overhead panel has a completely different texture as we saw earlier. If I look at this background panel, for example, I see that this texture is in use called normal map test.png. Well, if I click on this overhead panel segment, suddenly a different picture shows up. So now I know that I'm using two PNG files for this one scene. But to my surprise, and I actually looked it up and found it to be true in the documentation, it's actually allowed when you're dealing with a cockpit object. I don't know if you remember, a couple tutorials back, we looked at this and we said that we had to go to this script, which makes X-Plane panel regions out of this PNG file. Now what that did, it reserved those objects that were mapped to the panel regions to only the instruments, I guess with the idea of maximizing the space that you can use to animate instruments and using another texture to texture the rest of the cockpit. Now that's really good news because I was already debating whether I should go ahead and isolate all the parts that aren't mapped to panel regions or anything that's got animated textures from the cockpit and make a separate blender file out of it just to keep those textures separate. But I learned today actually that you can actually use two PNG files to texture your cockpit. One of the PNG files is the one that has the texture regions of all the instruments on it and the other one is the one that you can use to, for example, create the leather seats or create all the textures around the cockpit as you're working on it. So that's good news. Um, this cockpit is getting along nicely. I still have to uh, do the rest of the modeling, but I already uh, programmed and animated all these levers and buttons, and some of them have already assigned uh, functions to them that are the correct ones. I still have to go through and assign all the functions to all these buttons up here, and that is just uh, the nature of cockpit design. So this hopefully clarifies some issues that people have been having with textures and the problem of not being able to export scenes that use multiple textures. And I hope this also showed you how you can append objects from other Blender files or even complete body parts from other planes and stuff like that. But just keep in mind that every time you add something new, this list of textures gets longer and it becomes more confusing to keep this scene clean. Fortunately, the export script gives you a heads up on which object is problematic, which of these objects is mapped with a texture file that does not belong to the rest of the scene. So that helps you pinpoint the offending parts and eliminate them. Again, remember that when you're exporting stuff, it's wise to actually export them in little chunks, work on your cockpit in the detail that you need to work on right now. Each of these instruments may take quite a bit of time to texture properly, move everything else to a layer that's not layer one, two, or three, and then it's a lot faster to get yourself testing these objects in X-Plane and tweaking them as needed. So this is a part of the process. It's pretty tedious, but again, very rewarding. I will try to get more into some of these techniques of the combination of what to do with texturing and applying textures by baking and all those kinds of things. It's a, it's a quite a loop back and forth between Photoshop and Blender and X-Plane and Plane Maker. It's, it's quite a crazy loop. And then having to screen capture all of that, it really puts my computer through its paces, even though it's a top of the line MacBook Pro so if you're finding yourself waiting a lot of time with export and with rendering and if it's all choppy and stuff like that, you might want to consider an upgrade. So thanks for watching and please sign up to my YouTube channel and spread the word about these tutorials and rate this video and all the rest.